see a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R&D. And Mikhail noticed the windows, especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. You officers, come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez? I'm Khan Heilostam. You must be Kim Kitaragi, right? I was just telling my son about this building. Not a lot of people realize the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. Nice to meet you. Oh yes, so Mikhail, they had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then, that was 49 years ago. So they didn't have windows on the south wall. Yes, hypertext, young carp and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. He's just making up fancy words. This doesn't mean anything. No, I can't say that we've met before, but I've heard of Kim, of course. Mikhail, say hi to the officers. Mikhail's a little tired today. We spent all night trying to run Orbis on his radio computer. Have you heard of it? It's a programming language used in Grad. Quite tricky, but he wanted to play this Grad-made adventure program. We've been getting really into worms lately. But I assume you're not here for giant worms when there are so many real things to see. Just as I was telling Mikhail before, this is where the Coalition landed in 08. We could be standing on what is the most interesting landmark in Revachol West. This man is your half-brother. You feel it. But why? Aha! But it's not just any empty old building. What not a lot of people know is, this used to be the R&D department of Felt Electrical. And Felt? which now sells ink cartridges mostly, was once a top dog in the turn-of-the-century cybernetics boom. Hold on. What's R&D? That's not surprising. Only a vestigial ink cartridge and ferrotape manufacturer remains. They started out as a Midway Electronics outfit in Königstein two centuries ago. After an aggressive move to Revachol, Feld became a global player in the emerging personal electronics market of the pre-revolutionary era. Still, Tricentennial was beating them in business machines. But Feld had an ace up their sleeve, or should I say they were developing an ace up their sleeve? I'm mixing my metaphors here. It was here in Martinez, possibly in this very building, that they developed prototypes for a... Uh, tape computer. Mm -hmm. An elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferrotape ribbons, portable enough to be a take-it-home solution. Revolutionizing business machines, possibly even bring them to the average consumer. Which is a feat of engineering even today's giants, Rehm, ICN and Zam, haven't achieved yet. Indeed. What? The revolution! Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to the market. Feld's move to Revachol backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated those very advanced prototypes. Possibly from this very building, or one of the adjacent ruins. All of this was built by Feld, even a boardwalk. While Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middle management, Feld built this side of town for R&D. Yes, they even built a pleasure wheel, but that got destroyed in the war. 
A pleasure wheel? Perhaps reminded of a childhood memory. It's clear he would prefer there were a big wheel lighting up the coast. Yes. To lure in their star engineers. This part of Martinez was nothing but reeds before Feld arrived. They had to make the prospect of living here attractive. It was supposed to become a global center for innovation in cybernetics. But history had other plans. Oh, I'm afraid it didn't end well for the boys. But this story is a bit too dark for little Mikael here. Now, if you were to ask about tape computers... Actually, no one knows. No one even knows what a computer made entirely of tape would look like. But word has it, they were very elegant, exquisite, alien-looking, turn-of-the-century hardware. Ten years ago, I did a little... freelancing, I guess you could say. I was a special consultant for an exhibition at the Womty Domty Dom Center in Vredefort, Oranje. It raised the same questions, and we had lengthy discussions with Paul Ockerman, who was head curator at the time. This was before the twins Keith and Guy Jews joined the team, trying to... Wait, did he just say Wompty Dompty Dom Center? He did it. He said Wompty Dompty Dom Center like it's the most natural thing in the world. Yes, tape computers and Feld Electrical. They used them for military communications but also to write and send out press releases, the most notorious example being Le Decret de Mars. What's the Mars Decree? I mean the radio transmission sent out to news agencies and world governments by the newly created Commune of Revachol on the 7th of March in the year 02. It's a beautiful piece of text actually. A singer-songwriter I know, Charette, called it a love poem to Revachol on her political concept album Bon Bessier dans le Lind. You should read it. Every local library in Revachol stocks a copy of the decree. I tried to get Mikhail to memorize it. Tried to. Someone was much too interested in worms to be paying any attention. But of course, what else? No, thanks to you for having me and little Mikhail here to pick your brain. A very interesting conversation indeed. Remaining windows rattle from a strong gust of wind. They're covered in a thick layer of grime. They must have been like this for 40 years. Dripping water falls from a high place. All you can see is the shadow of a collapsing staircase. No. I won't even try. You know, I had a partner once. They called him Eyes because he had to show me things. It's that bad. This partner of his, Eyes, things didn't end well. It saddens him to say his name. Don't even ask. He wouldn't answer. Maybe some other small talk.
you stop mid-step and put your hand on the garish necktie? That bottle, Bratan! Just look at that bottle! Oh, I think this is about so much more than cool! Please go talk to him! See what it's about! I'm drawn to it! Good to see you, friend. Do I have deals set up for you, buddy boy? So what do you want? I've got smokes. They're cheap. Very cheap. I've got pills now. Great deal. You won't get a better deal on that piss. Spirits I can let go for 300 real. I also have speed. And by speed, I mean amphetamine. See? There it is, Bratushka! The spirit! Let's buy the spirit! 300 real is a lot, but this has to be done! It's our end game! Bratan, you don't understand! It's not just another drink! This is what our relationship has been building towards all these years! This is the climax! The mystery! The virginal sigh! You have to buy it from him! Get it off him! Kill him if you have to! Our ultimate fate depends on it! And the fate of many worlds! The lieutenant looks at you, looking at the bottle of spirits, then at Rosemary. Suspiciously. Oh, the system's been good to old Rosemary here, and I'm milking her like a bitch goat in the backyard. You see, friend, man makes his own luck, and I made mine real good. Got my hands on three bottles of liquor exqueeze, sold two to the fellows around here, and immediately invested the profit. Bought cigarettes, bought beer, even bought a bit of speed. And look at me now, I've got everyone on my hook. Of course, of course, of course. It is what it is, you know. What it's always been. People, buddy boy, it's the people. See, friend, it's real valuable. Worth every real, if you catch my drift. Got it from a bit of a business venture. You know, it's funny, actually. <laughs> what? This guy, this guy. Oh. This is medicinal spirits. The good stuff. Got it from the doctor's office. He ain't shitting you! Medicinal spirits are a blast, Bratan! The flaming truth of this joke of a world! I got one of those scientific ampoles a few months ago. Torpedo, they call it. It's supposed to keep a man from taking a drink. Didn't stop me for shit, that's for sure. Five lemons with half a pack of butter and you're good to go. It really isn't. In a week, the goddamn kidneys started giving me all kinds of help. Finally, the missus took me to a private doctor's office. Not a charity, the real thing. Those arseholes. Those arseholes charged me four real to remove the damn thing. But I came out on top after all. But the idiots left me alone in there. Now, I used to teach high school biology. I know what doctors use to preserve dead thingies. Swipe three cans of this blue medicinal stuff from the back room. Threw the snakes out and voila! What's left is this beautiful blue stuff. 98.7% almost pure alcohol. Two I already sold to these fine gentlemen here. But this last one is yours for three real if you want it.
Yeah, you thought right. Don't even try to sneak anything past old Rosemary here. Yeah? I got all senses locked on you, buddy boy. So what will it be? Aye, that's what I said just now. 300 real. Don't you try to trick me, buddy boy. Now you want it or not. You acted with great compassion and dignity, not taking advantage of this man. Praise thine honourable heart. So what do you want then? His tone is aggressive. You're getting on his bad side now. The alcohol boiling his blood causes the agitation. It burns. In the civilised world, it's a custom to tip the shopkeep, friend. But come back anyway. Don't you call her? Yeah! Don't call her, Abigail! Uh-huh. Abigail. Don't you fucking... Never thought you'd see such a thing in your life, but this guy's a little too drunk. He snorts and beckons you to lean in closer. Don't call Abigail. Don't call Abigail. Don't you fucking call her! Hear me! Abigail? Don't fall, Abigail! Hey, Tequila! Good to see you. How's business? How's the whole reality situation treating you? So what's happening? Yeah, Tequila Sunset. How are the, um, high-concept, reality-based adventures proceeding? Good. These people know your true name. Looks like it has preceded you, Mr. Sunset. More on that later. I like this guy! You should too! He respects you by calling you your true name! It's good to hear that you're on top of things. Talking about used to, did you know that I used to be a real mover and shaker? Sadly, things aren't going that well in Idiot Doom Spiral Land. Haven't found those keys yet, haven't won that great piece of ass back. No word from my business buddies. We are saving the world. Please! Please don't call! Don't call! Okay, we're drinking. We're drinking alcohol. That's what we're doing. I tried to save the world once, a long time ago, with enterprise, creativity, and willpower. But that didn't work out. So now, it's a pirate's life for me. It's you. Your Tequila Sunset. We've met before. Don't you remember? Maybe. You look like you want to know how Tequila Sunset came to be. You look like you want to hear the tale. Tequila. Tequila Sunset. Something ominous there. Mm-hmm. Let me take a sip to moisten up my cords. Tequila Sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday. And by Tequila Sunset, I mean you. The man, the myth. Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. You got here on Friday to solve a case, 
hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz. Because as far as I know, all you did was get pissed drunk. Word on the street is you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer, and that it would be really fucked up if you shot yourself in the head right in front of them. That's pretty high concept if you ask me. Does that sound like something you'd do? Yeah, probably. The lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually as he can. It was a late Saturday night when we, the Union of Moribund Alcoholics, were getting our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this, we get our drink on 24-7. Makes everything warm and glowy. I trust you know the feeling. Oh yes you do, Bratushka! The only thing better than that is pushing the pedal to the metal after you kiss the tie. And off we go! One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of dings and bangs. Naturally, loud noises pique the interest of anybody owning a pair of ears. That's just the reality we're in. Anyway, there was a brief silence. A gasp of silence, if you will. Followed by a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening towards the coast at top speed. Sounded like someone jumped the canal. We grabbed our brewskis and rushed to the jetty. Never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. What we saw was a sight to behold. A beat-up police carriage containing you. Right there on the beach, you revved the engine and screamed at the top of your lungs. The time hath come! So, naturally, being the curious cat I am, I asked what time hath come, to which you replied, The time hath come for Tequila Sunset, the end of all things! Yeah, looms. Why not? Then you jammed the pedal and plowed right off the jetty and through the ice. Your hands cramp on the steering levers. We ran towards the ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt, covered in seaweed and shit, like some kind of sea monster. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach crying. You said that your badge and uniform were in the car. It was too late to get in there, though. The carriage had sunk too deep. Recognizing a brother in need, we offered our condolences and invited you to party with us, which you naturally agreed to. What else was there to do? Thank you, brothers, for your helping hand. We asked about the whole tequila sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now, and insisted that we all call you that from then on. Yeah, I agree. Hours. It was an all-night drinkathon. Then, at some point, I think it was Sunday morning, you got belligerent and wanted to talk about Revacholian women. How they're beautiful and also whores and so on. How one of them fucked you real bad. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked sullen, got up, and left without saying anything. Wow. That's quite a story. Yeah. I bet Tequila's a fucking legend around the precinct. You must be proud to work with him. If you only knew. You were pretty vague about it, but you kept saying you got fucked real hard, and that we've all been fucked too. Please, don't open that door. No one's fucked me. I do the fucking around here. Abigail! It seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. If I had to guess, I'd say you're still working through some shit. Beside your gun and your badge? You said something about your hope, or heart, or something. To be honest, 
The details are a little hazy. In retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage too? That's a big one. You told us that they were a bunch of fucking losers whose main interest was cramping your style. It's more like you were cramping theirs. No specifics, though. It was more about you that night. You were the star of the show. Yeah, you said it was no biggie and that you'd solve it in no time. And that you didn't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo now. A lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. It's not meant as a joke. He's sorry for the hermit cop. Yeah, you kept talking about how the coal mine owners were fucking us all over, just like that woman fucked you. I didn't agree with you, by the way. The spectral hand of the market makes sure everyone gets exactly what they deserve. You kept apologizing for being such a bad cop, and for the damage you've inflicted on everyone around you. You also kept pausing to knock the heel of your hand against your temples, saying, STUPID, STUPID, STUPID! It's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. That's why I avoid mine at all costs. whoop de doo So now I'm a fucking storyteller. Right. Why not? Better than a beach bum. It depends, really. Are you willing to help me out? The gleam in his eyes and the slouch in his posture is so incredibly familiar. Booze! Did you already forget our party? The thing I relayed to you earlier. So, have you got anything for good old idiot Doom Spiral? A bottle for a story seems fair to me. Classy. Hey, Spiral Boy, you gonna share that? Don't call Abigail! Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. Something happened to you. Something happened to me, too. My actual name is George. But around here, you already know. I was once a reasonably high net worth individual. A founder slash junior partner at a high concept creative services agency. When my story begins, I had just landed a major contract with an insurance firm. I used the profits from my agency to finance what I called a cultural incubator. Abstract value generation, value per person, high concept stuff. I developed the paradigm, worked within the paradigm, but the burden of leadership weighed heavily on me. So I went jogging every so often to keep myself sane. It did. With my trusty Sansarik tracksuit, I felt like I could conquer the world. But now dreams are worn thin, much like my tracksuit. One day I left on my evening run. As you may know, it's impossible to clear your head when you're distracted by the sound of keys jangling in your pockets. So I removed the keyring and put the keys for the front gate and the apartment into different pockets. To stop the jangling, you see. At least, that was the plan. I was halfway done with my usual lap when it started to rain. The reality situation became very wet, very quickly. I made my way back home and discovered that I didn't have the key to the front gate. I'd mixed it up with the key to the letterbox, which was useless. Naturally, the situation required me to climb over the gate, which I did. There was no climbing down because I slipped and landed on my ass. Reality was looking rather grim just then. Me lying on my ass in a mud pit in the middle of a heavy shower. But when life knocked me down, I always got up. So I made my way across the yard. 
Standing in front of my apartment door, fumbling with my pockets, I realized that I'd also forgotten my apartment key. I wish I were, Tequila. I wish I were. Instead of my apartment key, I'd taken the key to the office. I rang my neighbor's buzzers. It was late, and most of them didn't even answer. Those who did assumed I was trying to sell them something and hung up before I could even explain the situation. People are naturally wary of ad men, you see. One moment someone chats you up, five minutes later you've bought a box of edible lingerie and a strap-on. I don't begrudge them, especially since I was known to be... one of the best. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Just then, I experienced a moment of clarity. I still had the key to my office. I could wait out the storm there. But when I reached my office, I remembered that I'd asked one of my producers to change the locks that day. And since I hired only the best, he'd already done it, and I couldn't get in. Anyway, long story short, life spiraled out of control. I haven't gotten into my apartment for years, and my girlfriend left me because she didn't want to date a homeless man. The company... well, you see where I'm going with this. So, now you've heard my tragic tale. What do you think? Like nothing you've ever heard, huh? Tequila, I've thought about this series of events for a long time. If there was anything else to it, I would have thought of it by now. Why didn't you go to the authorities? Well, at one point they came to me, but, you know, I, I didn't have any ID on me. So they tossed me in jail for two days. I can't say it increased my faith in the RCM. No offense, gentlemen. I don't remember you being such a dick before, Tequila. That doesn't mean you're wrong, though. Anyway, that was all the tale one bottle gets you. Almost empty, this one. Good fucking question, Tequila! If I knew the answer, you think I'd be hanging out on a beach in this Formerly premium, but now extremely dirty, two-piece Lycra tracksuit. I used to own my reality situation. My business buddies and I had our own creative services agency. I had a nice apartment, an even nicer piece of ass. But somehow it all got away from me. Now I can't hang on to anything. Just last week I stole this nice new jacket. But then I lost it, too. The only things I haven't lost are these two drunks. You of all people should empathize with this. Perhaps this lost jacket is something you could help with? My agency. Man. The Boom Boom Room. Our concept was combining high art with the lowest forms of marketing. The color red. Breasts and oil painting. I convinced my partners to reinvest some of our profits in an even more high-concept cultural incubator called Thin Air. The artists were happy, the clients were happy. I was financing a group of poets in East Revachal who were developing a new universal poetic language. But then it all went to shit. I know. It was fucking awesome. Until I went on a jog, unleashing a cascade of doom that washed it all away. What? You've never seen 100% Lycra before? Go on, feel that primo material. You really shouldn't touch it. Pretty nice, huh? This might be one of the last of its kind. Should probably be in a museum, honestly. Good God. It's nearly impossible to describe how dirty this texture is.
It's like rubbing two jellyfish skins together. You feel about 15% less human for having touched it. And then there's the smell. But you don't even want to think about that. Wow, you're lucky. He never lets me feel it. That's because your paws are fucking filthy, Rosie. We're right next to the bay. You could wash them any time. My fellow members of the Union of Moribund Alcoholics? They're exactly what they look like. Hey! Tequila! You wanna buy some speed? Shut the fuck up, Rosemary. He's a cop, remember? I thought he was a cool cop. Don't call up a guy! And this is Abs. So yeah, that's basically us. We drink together. Tequila... It's a verifiable tragedy. It was practically brand new. Sure, it didn't really go with my Lycra threads, but it did itch a lot less. Say, you're a detective, right? Maybe you can help old Doom spiral out. Solve the case of the missing jacket. What do you say, Tequila? Holy shit! Tequila, how did you... Never mind, I don't care. Just let me see the jacket. Let me see. What? This isn't my jacket. My jacket was beautiful. This is fucking filthy. What am I supposed to do with this? I'm not taking a disgusting pile of hobo rags. I may be in an irrecoverably decaying orbit, but I've still got standards. Either bring it back the way it was before, or find a dumpster to burn it in. You know... Despite the guano, it looks like the jacket itself is stain resistant. It may just need a good scrubbing. You too, Tequila Sunset. <laughs>